Well, good morning and thank you for joining me on this beautiful Friday morning. Uh, grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, this Sunday, uh, Pastor Mark is going to be preaching for us and he's going to be sharing a scripture theme that talks to us a little bit about prayer and really harps on the elements of constantly uh, praising and giving God glory. Uh, I thought we could do the same for our devotion today. Look at the ways that we are able to praise and give glory to God. Uh, I look around in the world right now and it's easy to see uh, people who maybe don't have a lot to be able to, to praise the Lord for right now, or at least they don't think they have a lot to be able to praise for. Uh, it's easy to look around and see people who are caught in turmoil, uh, people who are afraid, uh, people who are uh, suffering sickness. But the truth is, all these things have always existed in our world since sin first entered in. But even in the midst of sin, you and I have something to be able to rejoice over, to be able to praise over. And that truly is the grace that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. That no matter what we are suffering right now, no matter what um, elements we are going through, that the Lord has given us freedom and he's given us uh, an eternal promise in his son. And so today I wanted to look at uh, a scripture passage that shares that exact same thing with us. You see, this is a, a free-flowing theme throughout scripture that we are to be able to rejoice and praise God because of the great gift that he has given to us. Uh, so the passage I'm going to look at for today with you is from the book of Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to begin at verse 3 and probably read to about uh, verse 7. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Think about that. He has blessed us in the spiritual realms with every blessing uh, that is in Christ. For he chose us before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Think about that. Before the, the world was even spoken into creation, he knew you, that he was going to create you, uh, and that you were blameless and holy in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. That he has adopted us to be his own, that we are truly his children, uh, that we have this great uh, celebration because it says it's even to God's pleasure that we are adopted into his life. Uh, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us, the ones he loves. In verse 7, here now, uh, in him we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. There's that word again, uh, grace that is mentioned. Uh, my wife and I were gone for a couple days this past week, and uh, we were at a, a hotel that had a pool, just a couple of people that were hanging out in it. Uh, and as I approached the pool, my wife was uh, speaking with a woman that was in there, uh, a stranger, somebody we had never met before. I uh, sat down in the pool with them, and we started a, a conversation. Uh, things went from one thing to another, talking about jobs, talking about kids, and uh, she mentioned that she had two daughters, uh, a daughter who was 29 and a daughter who was uh, 21. And as we went through, I'd asked the girl's names, and she said uh, that her 21-year-old was named Grace. And, and I had asked her about that, why she had that name. And she said uh, that it took her years to actually discover what God's grace really was, uh, until she finally had that moment. She said she was always uh, kind of fearful in life. It's funny, she told me that she was a uh, Southern Baptist, and she said being raised Southern Baptist as a kid, she was taught that she always had one foot in hell and another foot on a banana peel. Uh, and I thought that was an interesting analogy. And this isn't how God wants us to live. And it took this poor woman, she said, uh, decades to really discover uh, what God's grace was in her life. That she truly could live in celebration every day and be able to, to know that God loves her and you and I so much that he would do anything for us. 
that he knew us before the world was even created. And he looked forward to the relationship that he would have with us. Uh, that the Lord was able to give us all the blessings that we have today uh, in Christ and know that we can celebrate not only here on this earth, but in the heavenly realms, these things are even granted uh, to us. And uh, this woman that we were speaking with uh, was so excited about this theme of grace, that's how she chose her daughter's name. And, you know, this is how God chooses you too. He is so excited about this theme of grace, about this gift that he has to offer us, this forgiveness of sins for the ones that he loves. Uh, he names each and every one of us with that special uh, element, that we are his sons and daughters who have this gift of grace pronounced down upon our name. And so today, wherever you are at, uh, whatever you see going on in the world, we know that those fears are real. Uh, we know that our pains uh, are real. We know that our, our struggles are always waiting for us. But we too know that we have this great gift of grace in God, that one day uh, every tear will be wiped away from every eye. Uh, every frown will be turned into a smile. Uh, all the pains that we have will go away because we have this celebration in our Lord. Uh, until then, we live both in his grace and also in this world as individuals that are sharing this free gift of God with all of those we come in contact with, even strangers in pools. In Jesus' name, we celebrate that gift of grace today. Amen.